What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage. Beautiful Friday. So I'm gonna do a uh, little bit of vlogging this weekend, probably just one video for the whole weekend, most likely. But uh, I'm gonna show y'all some stuff I did to the Ford. I really didn't introduce the truck or tell anything about it much, so I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, what we have here is a 95 F-150 XLT long bed four wheel drive with the 5.8 automatic. So bought this truck for a thousand off my dad. Uh, he had bought it for 700. It wouldn't shift into overdrive and was missing real bad. Also, when you would turn the headlights on when he got it, the truck would die. So he found out there was a ground that was uh, arcing off on a hot that was causing the uh, truck to shut off with headlight when the headlights came on. So fixed that, found out a fuse was blown for the overdrive. Fixed that, found out spark plug wires was accidentally swapped and that fix a missing. So we fixed it pretty much for free. I mean the price of a fuse, which is, you know, pennies. So I got the truck, the power windows and locks didn't work in it, fixed it. I did a video on the power window fix actually on this channel and a bunch of Fords have this problem. So if you ever have a power uh, window problem where the, you can hear the motor going, but the window doesn't move, it's most likely these little plastic balls has busted. So watch my video if you wanna learn more about that. I also put these new rubbers on it, 3110 50s. These are Iron Man All Country ATs. I love them for the price, they was 110. I mean, you can see the tread depth. They're really nice. Uh, I'm eventually gonna put some black Krager style wheels on it, the 17 inch by 10s, and get rid of these aluminum bullet holes. I've never been a fan of them. I mean, they don't look bad, but not my choice of wheels. Also, put some headlights in it. The uh, corner lights, these right here, as well as these was already, you know, that clear, but the headlights was real yellow. So replace those and put some of these $20 light bars off Amazon on each side of the grill. And I haven't finished it, but I went ahead and cut that Ford emblem out that used to sit there. I'll back up and let you get a front shot. I think it makes it look a little bit better. And I know the truck pretty much looks like crap with the, with the gray bedside and the clear coat coming off on the hood. And as well as this gray fender and it also has a rebuilt title which i mean i don't care a thousand bucks i love this truck i put new tail lights with the led bulbs and i'd actually bought hids for the front of this truck when the hids came in both of them was bad both low beams well at first one low beam worked uh, and the other one didn't i bought them off amazon for like 40 bucks and then they both end up stop working like within minutes so one box was dented, which may have got hurt in shipping. I'm not sure. But, uh, so I just sent them back, got my money back. With those light bars, um, you don't really don't need anything else. Those light bars are bright for their size. Highly recommend those. 20 bucks on Amazon. You can kind of see the guy that had this before me, not my dad, the guy my dad bought it from, really just used it as a work truck. You can see the carpet's pretty much disgusting. I don't keep it vacuumed or nothing because it don't matter. It's just no truck and you know pieces are broke like that the dash is actually real clean it's just like that bezel if i would change it which i eventually will because all the clips are broken as you can see it it's a uh, real wobbly only the clips on this side i'm pretty sure are holding four wheel drive works great the power windows and locks like i said i fixed all that and this won't go down in here because it's supposed to have two clips on each side that are broke off the door panel so I'll be making a video real soon of how to make wood door panels for a truck. And I think y'all like them quite a bit. So I'll get that video up pretty soon. But yeah, headliner is pretty much crap. And I'll be doing a headliner replacement probably on Sunday or it may be next weekend. Not sure. It's supposed to come in what I'm doing. And that's kind of a surprise. You'll have to watch a video. And uh, you like my cup holder I made? I had a 4x4 four four and some 1x8s. Put the 1x8s to make it set flush. Worked out pretty nice, a bunch of junk I had laying around. Now the truck came with this toolbox. One lid latches, one doesn't. This one is the one that latches. It just needs a spring on the opposite side. And the uh, actuator right there, the pump doesn't work. I mean, you gotta hold it up. So I got this little pipe here that's perfect to prop the lid. Uh, I'm gonna do a review on Tool Talk of this Stanley tool kit. I know some people's gonna knock Stanley. Stanley works great, never has left me stranded. Craftsman works great, never has left me stranded, so I trust them. That is the best tool per dollar you can get in a tool kit. 
and then of course I got ratchet straps and whatnot. The basket, the milk crate back there has towing straps, chains, and my hitch receivers. And then I got a come along sitting down there that I'm eventually gonna get a winch, but that's a cheap poor boy's winch. I thought these was pretty cool when I found them at the Ford dealership I work at. These was actually from the 80s, 70s or 80s, and uh, they're little clips that can withstand, I think, 400 pounds. Yes, 400 pounds, and they set flush. The only one I haven't put in yet, because one of the screws kind of got messed up, was this one. I had to beat this bed back down. You can see it took a hit from something. But like I said, this truck is purely a work truck. I love it because I don't got to care about scratching it, denting it. Actually, I was playing in the woods behind my house, and uh, then at the bed and door right here, you can kind of see the scratches right there. If I get it the right angle, you may be able to tell that, but then at the door, cab, and bed slid into a tree when I was playing in the mud. So let's pop the hood and we'll show you the big dirty V8. And dirty it is. You can see, like I said, this guy used this truck for 100% work. I mean, he over uh, pulled with it, pulled more than he should have. But uh, yeah, I uh, put this cold air intake kit on which I uh, love the way it sounds. Sounds like an 04 barrel, barrel on a uh, V8. And I also need to redo that thermostat housing because it is leaking. I never have messed with it, but I don't know if you can see in there the antifreeze. But uh, currently what I got to do to it is fix that antifreeze leak, which is okay for now. I mean, it don't leak like crazy. And you can see how that fuel tank leaks. That's the only fuel tank I can use right now. The pump is out in that one. I do have a fuel pump for that front tank. I just haven't had enough people over to help me pick the bed up because the front tank is full of gas. The people that owned it before my dad had bought it, his wife had drove it to town one day, forgot that the front tank didn't work, filled it up. And it's, I believe, an 18 gallon tank, so that'd be quite heavy to lower down. So pull the bed off is the easiest way to me. I would much rather do it that way. But uh, why it's leaking is I guess the fuel return goes in the front tank, not the rear which i mean would make sense it's closer to the engine um and it's overflowing that front tank when i'm driving you know it's putting the fuel return back to that but uh i've did it's almost due an oil change and i've did a fuel pump on it and that's pretty much what i mentioned is all i've did to it so far but plenty more to come to this old dirty truck this truck will be a big piece on on my channel yeah, as you can see, I got junk laying everywhere. These two by fours, I don't know what to do with them. They're, they're non-treated, so it's not like I can throw them outside because they're gonna warp. Uh, that computer case is trash. Get to dump that in the trash bag, and we got to get this thing running this weekend. It's just hard with the amount of hours I work and trying to spend time with the family and make everybody happy. You know, it's a, just a little bit hard to get stuff done, but you can see whole place is trash i can put this heater under there for now to get it out of the way it hasn't been really cold enough in tennessee to uh to use that heater and i got to do something with all that plywood scrap pieces and uh wood over there get it out of my way because i hate clutter like that in the shop feels like every time i clean this garage two days one project in the the garage is trashed but uh I probably am gonna put these two by fours up under the house for now. I have nothing to do with them. I may actually rip a few of them in half and make a couple two by twos because I'm gonna do some shelves in this closet, which I'll show y'all on another vlog when uh, I go buy all the pine shelving boards. And I'm not gonna use spruce because pine will work uh, just fine, cheap stuff. But yeah, I gotta get the a tube for that go-kart and that's the only part I need. I will put the back tires on it tomorrow. It's gonna to kind of have a hot rod pitch to it. I didn't want that, but I don't think the front tires, front wheels, I think the shafts are too small on the go-kart for the front wheels I have to make the front bigger. It's just a set of wheels and tires kind of off like a 40 inch Murray riding mower. But I got to take the clutch off. I had, I think I had mentioned that my brother had gave me this brand new clutch that he had for a go-kart of his. And it's a number 40 chain and mine sprocket and chain is a number 35. So I got the clutch on now or in now. I need to slap that on tonight, get the chain tensioned and then take the go-kart down just not even a mile down the road to my buddy's house. He's gonna weld some brackets for the throttle cable because I had showed in an earlier video that I'm using the cruise control cable off my laser. Worked perfect, I just gotta make a bracket to bolt it to to hold it in line with the 
throttle. So, we're going to get all that done, and she should be riding it by lunchtime tomorrow, hopefully. And that's only if he's off tomorrow. Hopefully, if he's not off tomorrow, I can take it tonight and get stuff welded. I'll pull the camera out and uh, show you a little bit. But, yeah, this is going to be a long vlog. I might cut it up into a couple parts, but uh, I'm going to, I know I'm doing a lot of nip-napping while talking, but I need to get all this junk cleaned up in the garage, and I'll pull the camera out when something interesting happens. All right, I got that bracket welded up on the go-kart that I was telling y'all it needed for the throttle. So here's the bracket. We welded a piece of square stock to the frame down there. Welded another piece of square stock going up on this piece of uh, plate steel, and then this will bolt right there and you can adjust it as well so once my buddy gets here we're going to put a tube in one of the tires one of the rear tires and put both tires on and then put the the clutch on chain and then bolt that throttle cable up and she should be golden so when we get a little closer pull out the camera okay been working on this go-kart a little while and got a couple of things that's kind of frustrating me it seems that if you spin the axle the chain will get tight and then there's it's almost like there's spots that'll get loose and i don't understand the line i mean everything's tight i don't understand i mean the axle shouldn't be warped because my brother was running this axle before and had no problems with it and uh, then we put a tube in the tire and i don't know if we popped the tube which is possible i mean it's very easy to do that or the tube was you know bad it seems like it was leaking around the valve stem like the valve stem was ripped or something so now we got to pull that damn tire back off the rim and get a new tube in it and that was a pain in the arse so so i took a break because when you get mad you learn to uh take your break because you're gonna break something put the front bumper back on and the only thing i'm worried about is that it pretty much rides against the intercooler right there over there it isn't so bad I mean, you can see there's a little bit of a gap but right here they're definitely it's definitely riding against it but I don't know if that could wear a hole in that aluminum eventually which uh, it seems like it would but uh, yeah I haven't put the the lights in yet or nothing or stove pipe stove piper um, haven't put the grill in or the lights I had to go to the park store and get some bulbs and that's where I just got back from but yeah, before I put those lights on, I need to decide if I need to trim that bumper, take that bumper off and trim it. And I can't find the original air duct that was on the the right-hand side when you're sitting in the car. The right-hand side fog light hole went to the intercooler, intercooler. And I can't find that piece of plastic that's sitting there because I was going to mod it to hold a piece of two, like to have a two and a half inch PVC lip on it to put... I got this flex pipe stuff like you use it for running uh, AC and heat in older vehicles and that's what rams there to my air box but I can't find that little little port thing so this whole day has kind of not really been a disaster but it seems like everything I try to do don't work out you know one of those days but I'm gonna mess with this go-kart and try to figure out why the chain is doing that. The motor's been tightened down, so it should stay, pr unless the uh, the sprocket's warped, which that wouldn't make any sense either because, it, I mean, it's all brand new unless they shipped it, you know, warped. I, it seems like it spins a full, a full turn before it, it loosens up. So I don't know, it's pretty aggravating. So what I'm gonna do is get it, off of the uh, these blocks I got it sitting on and set the blocks under the frame and then test a few things out and we'll see where we go I'll pull the camera out if something interesting happens okay got everything on but the grill and the only reason I have to to leave the grill off right now is because when you put these front mount intercoolers on which you can see peeking out that bottom hole when you put those on you got to cut the hood support the hood latch support that goes down so now when you try to shut the hood that support bends down instead of staying still so the hood can latch so i need to leave that hole so i can reach my hand and hold on to that what's left of that brace and latch the hood what i could do about that is it would involve pulling off the radiator again and i'm not doing that i mean it's not that much work but i just don't want to drain there's a lot of places on these cars that can get 
an airlock in the coolant, so I don't want to risk getting an airlock. But if I was to pull that radiator, I could put a piece of angle iron or flat stock steel in there and stiffen it up. But instead of going that route, I'm going to put hood pins on it, not the old muscle car pull ones. These are flush mount black ones. You push a button, these little caps pop up, push the caps back, and you can raise the hood. And I'm going to put actuators on the hood to hold it open. But I'm going to clean the front bumper. The rest of the car has been cleaned real good. The front bumper is the worst part of the car. It's got some chips. It is a uh, aftermarket front bumper, like a factory um, bumper. Someone hit a deer in this car, the people that owned it before me. So, I'm going to put the car up for sale. I'm going to clean it up really good, the front bumper and stuff, and put it up for sale. And I'm trying to get four, a 35 the way it sets, or four with, it needs an intake manifold gasket and tune. Tune's 80 bucks. I already got the intake manifold gasket. If whoever bought it from me didn't want to put the gasket on their self, I know a mechanic that'll do it for 100 to $200. Um, that's charging 50 an hour. It's gonna take two to four hours for him to do it. So yeah, if someone bought it for 35, they're actually saving themselves about $220 because they could go pay a mechanic to put that part on for about 200 bucks, worst case scenario, and then go get it tuned for 80 and have 220 in their pocket. So if I get that stuff done, it'll be four grand because of the me doing the labor, but I may actually pay the guy myself because I don't really feel like messing with this car much more. I went about this car wrong i guess not wrong but i should have bagged tag bolts which everything's put back together everything's fine but it, i went about it to make it more stressful putting it back together uh new i knew starting it that i should have bagged and tagged all the bolts you know and right front bumper bolts bolts and um i didn't do that so it's been a little bit frustrating putting it back together just sifting through big piles of bolts i'll show you so I've been sifting through all this junk, you know, trying to figure out which bolt is for what. And there's some random, like that big one right there, that just doesn't go to anything. But yeah, she's, I mean, the car is amazing shape though. You can see how clean it is. The front bumper, of course, is dirty because I just put it on there. But you can see all the paint chips around it, uh, right there and down in that hole. Okay, I actually think that I found the problem this sprocket is aluminum and the teeth isn't real deep on it and they're a little bit wide i believe at the you know at the base where they start to come up i, I don't really know how to explain it but what i think is happening is this chain is not it don't like to to ride in there really good sometimes so i'm going to spin it and you'll see and it watch it it probably is going to i know the chain is way too loose it needs to be tighter see right there it's getting tighter but that's just because it's getting off of the uh, the teeth here. And I'm trying to figure out where. So basically, it just needs some tension put on it. And uh, what I'm gonna do is run it real tight, run the chain tighter than normal. You know, you're supposed to leave a little slack. This is way too much, you know, I understand that. I need to put washers up under the motor, actually. But I'm just gonna run it tight to kind of break in this sprocket. I'm sure it'll take one good drive with it tight and it'll break it in and the chain will loosen up a little bit but yeah i think that's the problem it's not seating all the way down on the teeth i'm gonna probably unload this and get it on that that table right there i'm probably gonna knock out another tool talk i had a bunch of them done but I, there's a way i want to do them so i'm gonna start over on my tool talks the ones i had pre-recorded but at least we got this mother put back together so i'm gonna wash that front bumper to make it match the rest of the car and put this thing on craigslist and try to try to sell it i'm gonna miss it but i'm i need a garage it, it's flat out i need a garage i need to sell that so i can pay the difference to the bank and sell this puppy which i'm gonna miss both cars that's an awesome car six speed manual you know uh, 300 horse it's awesome and whoever buys that is going to get a crazy good deal but you know you got to do some stuff in life to get what you want so you got to take some sacrifices and that and that is my sacrifice so but anyways guys thank you for tuning in to this vlog let me know in the comments below if y'all like these vlogs and want me to keep it up i'm going to do one a week for about a month and y'all can i'll decide at the end of that if it's if it's worth the the hassle of it i probably will keep doing it because i enjoy it i like showing what i'm doing but yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
Make sure to check out Tool Talk, my new series on my channel. New episode will be up Tuesday at 4 p.m. Guys, appreciate all your time watching my videos and commenting, and I'll see you on the next Red Beards Garage. I'm out.